Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me for this acrylic painting tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint a wishing well with a few little birds and some flowers. I've got my husband, Mark, with me. Hey there, everybody. He's man in chat tonight, so if you've got questions while we're painting this, you can ask that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you stay tuned for it. All right, let's get started. All right, stay tuned. I just dated myself with that phrase right there. <laughs> I don't think we tune into anything just about anymore. <laughs> Maybe the radio. <laughs> All right, I've got a 12 by 9, a 9 by 12 inch canvas here. This is a Fricks, Fredericks Mixed Media Canvas Board. I have not done anything except for paint it with uh, ultramarine blue and black. So, um, just a dark color. It doesn't really matter. I wanted it to be a little bit more blue than it turned out to be. Um, it turned out a little bit more black than I intended, but it doesn't matter. We're going to have it in the background, um, and I think it'll help make it come together a lot faster. Sometimes having this black background when you've got a really dark subject just really makes everything else pop off of it. So I think that's what's going to happen tonight, fingers crossed. I uh, haven't painted this ahead of time, so you guys get to see it uh, live straight through. We'll be painting it from start to finish tonight and answering questions as we go. Um, and also maybe talking about food and other other unrelated odd things. That's <laughs> <It's>, a given. <laughs> that's a given, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Uh, the brushes are going to be, um, I'm going to want like an angle brush for some of the grasses, uh, maybe a long um, liner brush or um, this one is a two liner from Aspen um, line of Princeton. And this one, these ones in the green are the Summit series. So I've got a couple rounds um, in different sizes, big, medium, large, uh, small. Uh, I went opposite big, medium, yeah, small. There you go. And then um, some foliage brushes. So just whatever you like to use for foliage. Um, and I've done several tutorials on foliages, foliages, is that a word? Um, the um, Foliage. Foliage. <laughs> <laughs> the the um, video that I did a few weeks ago with uh, the light, forest light, it's called, um, it had different foliages and uh, the different brushes that you use for foliage. So um, if you want to check that out, you can. But anyhow, so I've got a few foliage brushes here and I've got a couple of angle brushes and I think we're good to go on those. Um, the angle brushes just kind of help with some of the details. We're going to be going over in our mini lesson tonight um, that I've been doing. I hadn't done one last week, but we talked about brushes last week. So if you missed that um, and had questions about brushes, that one answered hopefully everything because it was like two hours long. Um, lots and lots about brushes. But we're going to be creating soft and hard edges and talk about how to, um, how, what the difference is and uh, what it does for the painting and things that you're doing. So we'll do that a little bit later uh, when we have some time. Um, let's go over colors. Got carbon black, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, quinacridone magenta. This one is pyrrole orange, but you can use pyro or uh, cadmium orange instead. Um, this one is, which one is that? Uh, nick, quinacridone nickel azo gold. Um, or you can use Indian yellow or something like that. Just a golden yellow. Um, it doesn't look gold. It looks brown, but it, it, it is gold. Trust me. Um, yellow oxide, cadmium yellow light, green gold, thalo green yellow shade, uh, thalo turquoise, and ultramarine blue. Unbleached titanium, titanium white, gloss glazing liquid. If you don't have these exact colors, just use what you have. Um, the green gold is just going to give us a head start because there's a lot of that color in here in the foliage and the mosses and things. And so I just decided to go ahead and go with it. I'm going to start using it more often. We tried to mix it last week. If you missed that, um, I showed, or maybe not that last week, the week before, where I showed the comparison of yellows and different things. Um, and then I talked about, we tried to mix green gold, which was right here, and we didn't really get very close. Um, so, <laughs> so I can do it, I promise. I just didn't uh, have the right colors out on my palette, I don't think, to do it at the time. So I'm just going to put it out there, you know? Why not? Um, if you don't have it, don't panic. You can try to mix it like I did, but um, it's... It's honestly, it's it's just a yellow gold is all it is, you know, just gold or green some with some, you know, some uh, 
uh, green gold. Um, it's just got a lot of yellow in it. So that's it. All right, let's get going here. Um, I think I'm going to do the background with a sponge. So um, I didn't mention that when we were talking about materials, but um, we're just kind of a large foliage brush if you've got one. But I'm going to go ahead and put a spun uh, glove on so I don't get this paint all over my hands. And this foliage in the background here, and I'm going to re redraw this. So I just kind of wanted to get an idea of where where my placement was in my wishing well because I was thinking about doing it on a square canvas, but I decided to go ahead since it's kind of a vertical. Um, image or object um, that this would work out better. So I'm going to do my kind of background just about, just kind of maybe a little bit below the lip of this um, wishing well, which is just a really squished oval there in the middle. Um, it is not quite on the third. So if you split your canvas in thirds, go just a little bit wider on each side. That's kind of where our borders of our wishing well are going to be. And then we're going to have two um, posts there that are about um, they're pretty close to the edge ish. So, you know, about, um, I don't know, about two inches maybe from the edge if you're using the same size canvas as me. And then just leave a little bit of space at the top for our little bird that's going to sit up here. Um, I had some funny comments about these, um, I, <laughs> when we posted the, yeah, about the, about the image, people were like, that looks like those birds were photoshopped. I'm like, yeah, they were. <laughs> I don't know why that's ding, ding, ding. surprising, but okay. Uh, like, yeah. Okay, so something thereabouts. And then we're going to have flowers down here. And I think I'm going to simplify these flowers a little bit. And I don't think I'm going to put this railing down here because I'm not thinking it's going to add much to it. Um, maybe if we had a wider space or something, we could do something interesting with the diagonal and make you know, other things happen, but we've got kind of such a narrow space and I feel like it kind of cuts it off in a weird way. Um, so I think I'm going to leave the fence out. Really, it's just a couple lines in there. So, um, if you want to put yours in, it's not going to hurt my feelings. All right, let's, um, use, <laughs> use the sponge brush and I'm going to grab the turquoise with it. And if you want to use a palette knife to kind of grab it so you don't get all your other colors messed up right there. You can. I'm um, going to get that, and then I'm going to get some burnt sienna just to deepen the color, make it a little bit richer, and I'm going to get a little bit of that phthalo green too. Okay, and then um, let's go ahead and see how that looks. So it's going to be pretty dark. You're not going to be able to see much of it, but I'm going to go ahead and, and tap that in so it's in my dark areas. Um... I'm just going to go right over the top of that bird. I'm not worried about him. Okay, and then I'm going to slowly start introducing a little bit of a lighter lighter color. So I'm going to get a little bit of this unbleached titanium. And just go for a mid-tone of this color. And then dab that in. And if you see in the reference photo, there's really obvious kind of like little leafy um, areas where those fo that foliage is jutting out and catching the lights. And then there's lots of dark areas too. So I'm going to leave lots of dark in here. That's what's going to give us our nice contrast. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to get a little even more of my unbleached titanium. And I'm using this because the white will make it go aqua right away and this kind of keeps it slightly more green because it's got like a almost yellow tint to it and then we can add just a little bit of of a yellow even too to make it even more yellow and I'm just going to tap that in really well and then this I'm going to be much more strategic about get some strategery going here and just Tap in a few places that'll really pull that color out. I wish I left, there we go, I left a little bit of that medium color. So I want to have some of that kind of just to bridge the gap between those colors, but that looks really good. Let's do a little bit up there, maybe a little bit over here. And then there's a pretty good amount of it right here where this is coming down. 
and kind of in the middle here. You see I'm kind of doing these like almost lines kind of um, the foliage as it grows out it kind of creates these little well the branches you know create these kind of oval type shapes as they come out towards us um, and as they're kind of going away from us they create a little bit of more of a line shape so we can kind of create um, movement in this area by doing those two shapes in different places all right so that's looking pretty good I'm not going to do a whole lot more than that with this and then let's do down here um, let's go ahead and do a little bit more of a brighter green. So I'm going to get that green gold and um, thalo green. I'm just going to tap this in down here, kind of along that line that I drew. And don't get rid of all of my dark. And I'm going to put a few grasses here too, so leave a little bit of black space there so that we can do some grasses up here and they won't get lost against that lighter foliage there. Okay, so let's go and do that. And you can see what I was talking about, you know, using this sponge and using this dark canvas like this can really make the painting come together pretty quickly because we've already taken that step of adding that light or the dark, I mean, our darker values in, so we're not having to do that. You know, if we didn't do the black, then you would be doing a dark green in all of these areas first, and then doing this step over that. Um, okay, and then I think I'm gonna do just a few areas with this up in here. So just a few little random bits. Kind of there, okay. So that looks pretty good. I think I'm gonna quit there. I'm going to get a little bit of water on my sponge. I'm not going to try to clean it out of my water here because it's just going to make a mucky mess of my water. So I'm just going to set it aside and make sure it's really saturated with water, though, so that it doesn't dry out and leave it to dry later. I might even, I think I'm going to do this with my glove and kind of hide it in my glove so that it stays damp until I can wash it. And then you'll be going, where did I put my sponge? Exactly, yeah. I'm going to be, find it, I'll find it three weeks later all moldy. And <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, what the heck? Okay. <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> yeah, then you'll, you'll find it someday in the freezer. <laughs> oh, there's my keys. There, there it is. Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, all right, so that was good. Let's go ahead and while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I was talking about with the hard and soft edges. I think that that will be a good thing. So I want that completely dry before I do the next step. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and use this um, four round for this. And I just wanted to talk about when we're going to be doing these poles, um, the, the posts up at the top of our wishing well, um, we want to look them to look kind of rounded and so they're um, and then we also want them to look kind of stacked so um, what we'll be doing is doing a dark color and they'll be I'll, I'll show a couple different things here so I'm going to show you a hard edge and the hard edge will make it look like the wood is folded so that's not what we're going to want in this case but Maybe if you have something like a windowsill or um, a building or something like that, you're going to want a hard edge on it. Um, with something that's more fluid or rounded, you're going to want a softer edge. So I'm going to start with the black, and then I'm going to go with a color that's kind of in between. So kind of a lighter gray. I'm just adding a lighter color here. I'm not doing anything too fancy here and I'm going to fluff out that edge there on the soft edged one this is what we'll be doing with our wood so we're going to want a blend between the dark and the light on this one and so I'm going to kind of go from the dark and start to add light I'm going to just go ahead and get the white here 
and then go along this edge with the lighter color and you see how it's creating a line there and then to, to get rid of that I'm going to just go back over here after I put that on and smush that into my dark side okay so now it looks a little bit rounded and then generally I will leave a little bit of the mid-tone on this side of the object as well just a little bit so sometimes I will do the whole thing dark and that's probably what we'll do with our with our our wood posts is we'll do the whole thing dark and then we'll do a, a blend over to the light side and then over here on the light side I'm going to add just a little bit of highlight down but not go all the way to the edge okay and I'm going to blend that in a little bit Okay, and this is what I want you to practice because this will help you when you get to doing real paintings. Um, when you want to blend something like this, where it's where you want it to look rounded, um, it's great to do for circles. So we can do it for um, a circle too, and um, take it and do a little bit of a of a light edge somewhere maybe up at the top here it's more light not quite to the edge I'm just gonna blend this into this dark as my mid-tone and it'll start to blend right and then have a really bright highlight kind of somewhere sort of in the middle okay so practice both of those shapes and then we're gonna do one more where we're gonna go in and out of of it um, sort of like a fabric right so um, for this one I'm just gonna kind of do an organic type shape and then I want you to see what happens when you add highlights to just certain areas of it so take your and if you do this while the black is still wet it'll just blend for you so maybe we want to see if this area can be raised up right so it'll look like this fabric is sort of like maybe a piece of fabric and it's folded but it's raised up right there so i'm going to just put that light color in the middle and you see how it's starting to look like it's coming up a little bit let's put a little bit on this side too so maybe this side is raised up too. Maybe over here too. Of course, your fabric's not going to end up, you know, perfectly lined up like this, maybe unless it's maybe a flag or something. But this is great practice for blending, blend, you know, one color into another. I'm going to get my black again and push this back right here. And push it back over here so I get a nice soft blend where it's going one into another oh my friend's calling me in the middle of my show <laughs> doesn't she know me <laughs> hold on <laughs> I'm gonna mute my phone <laughs> um, and then get some white and go right down the middle with that okay Wiping that out and then just kind of using it to buff out the edges. This is great practice and don't over blend on top of your white area. You want to go kind of on either side of it. You're not really wanting to touch right in the middle. And you can even go back in and do it again as many times as you need to. And I think it probably needs to blend out a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of extend it out on either side just a little bit more. And then get my dark and kind of come back in and get try to get a mid-tone it's best if you have like dark medium light you know and your light area is the kind of most raised area that's getting the most light and that will bring it make it look like it's closest to you or coming at out at you okay so now we've got kind of a wavy not not a great example but I think you're getting the idea hopefully might go just a little bit more white just in the center there. And of course, if this was curved, you, you know, this is a, we're, I'm kind of doing them in straight lines because it's a little bit easier. But if it was fabric, it would be 
we would be doing curved lines instead of straight lines here. Um, but you get the idea, okay? So practice that. And then with your hard edge, what's going to happen is you will have... Um, you will have your two colors right up next to each other with no blending or very minimal blending. Okay, and what that does is make that raised area, and I'm going to make this one kind of the mid-tone next to it, make that raised area look like it is folded, right? And this, this is more obvious if I was to do like a square. So we could do like a square, um, like, um, like maybe this is the dark side of a house, say. Um, so we'll do kind of a rectangle shape here for this. You get the idea. And then the mid-tone might be on one side of it. But this line would be nice and hard on along that edge. And when I say a hard edge, I just mean those two colors are meeting and the, that line between them is very clean. Um, it's not blended like over here. And then with my white or lightest color, I could come on top here and maybe do another rectangle here and maybe this black maybe this black um, part would come up in a in the corner right here so maybe it's like that right it's a little bit hard to see that and I'm making a mess because I haven't cleaned out my brush but hopefully you're getting the idea right so it's it's really helpful to practice all of these. So what you can do with this hard edge um, one is make yourself little little shapes, um, just straight lines intersecting, and put your um, different three values, four values, however many you want, in different parts of it, and see what you know what makes it look like it's raised up towards you. Um, and just putting these colors right up next to each other like this creates these um, very dramatic um, hard edges that will make your object look like it's folded and, and more um, straight, more, I don't know what the word I'm trying to say is, but folded, I guess. All right, so practice those. Um, I'm sure there's more that I'm not thinking of that you could do there, but um, it's just an idea to get you kick-started on trying, you know, trying practicing it, just seeing what, um, what you can come up with, you know. Well, I don't know. All right. Seemed like a good idea. <laughs> Let's do. I think it was a good idea. Okay, good. I'm gonna do now the roof of the, this, and so, we're gonna do it with that kind of same hey, real thing quick, in mind. What? Go ahead. Uh, somebody wanted to know: Could they make that soft edge with a different sized? round brush or do they have to have the four aspen oh no 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 yeah yeah you can use a, a flat brush you can use whatever you want yeah use okay. the brush is not that important i just was using this one because i already had it dirty so no yeah use in fact um you know it might you might find it easier to use a different kind of brush um so but yeah so that's yeah all right, so I'm going to make up a brownish gray here. I think I'm going to add a little bit of my ultramarine blue. So I've got burnt umber, ultramarine blue, and a little bit of that black and gray mixture that I was just using. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that across. And this will be our dark um, part of our boards. You can leave a little bit of the black showing in between if you want. 
It's up to you. But you want to pick a brush that's about the width of the boards. That way it's just easy to do one all the way across and then you don't have to worry about, you know, painting it again or whatever. All right. Some of them are a little bit smaller in the middle here. You're not seeing as much of them. <clears throat> I had another question regarding the practice. Sorry. Okay. I'm just seeing them. Yeah, yeah. Um, somebody wanted to know if you thought that using a gouache for these practice tutorials would work. Oh, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because you're just using, um, I mean, the gouache is going to re act a little bit different than acrylics because it can reactivate. So if you add any kind of more fluid paint or water on it, it will... It will, you know, mix. It'll blend a little bit easier. So it may be easier to, than acrylics even to, you know, practice. And you're what you're really just doing, it, you know, the main thing about these, these like, lessons is not, you know, a right or wrong. It's really just exploring your paint, exploring your brushes, getting them out, trying things out, just seeing what what works for you. And the more you get them out and practice and do these things, the more comfortable you'll be when you sit down to actually paint something. Um, it will really, really help you. I hope, um, I hope that those, you know, maybe some people in chat have been doing them and can shout out their experience with it. But, um, I think that I've gotten some pretty good feedback and comments about, uh, the different, the different lessons that we've been doing. Okay. I'm just noticing this side of the this side of the wishing well um, thing is sticking out a little bit more. So I'm going to bring this one in just a little bit right here. And, and I, I did notice they were, um, they were kind of leaning in. So I'm doing that intentionally. I'm not putting them straight up and down. So I'm just making it look a little bit more rustic by making it a little bit more lean and lean to the side there a little bit. Okay. So that's good. So basically I just kind of put back my dark areas. I'm going to do it here too. Um, on the wishing well, uh, any of that green that covered it up and okay. So that looks good. All right. Then I'm going to go ahead and get, let me just go ahead and get this light, light color. The unbleached titanium will work, whatever, kind of a mid, mid tone. And I'm going to sort of dry brush it on. So this will be a little bit different than we did in the example because I want it to be wood tone so I want it to be a little bit more rustic I'm a little bit more like I said dry brushed and then I'm going to take it so I did the first line there and I'm just going to take my kind of dry-ish brush not as much paint in here and just kind of come along below it and push that paint pull it the paint, paint down a little bit across that board okay and get the next one and just come down leave a little bit of space with the dark come down and do the next one this brush that's the reason I grabbed the Aspen is because it's already got a lot of uh, a stiff stiffer texture so that it um, it will do this dry brushing really easily for me it's already gonna kind of be doing it whether I want it or not and I do want it so it works out Okay, a little bit more of the light color. Maybe get a little bit of blue this time. I'm seeing a little bit of blue in some of these highlights. So I'm gonna get a little bit of that ultramarine blue. Ultramarine, I always say ultramarine. Ultramarine blue. And I don't want these to be perfectly straight either, so I'm kinda gonna go back through here and sort of wiggle around a little bit. And I'm, I can already tell I'm going to have to go back in with my black in between some of these just to round them out maybe a little bit. But I think they're starting to get there. I'm getting the look. It comes together pretty quick. These aren't... And the, the, I think the main thing is just kind of using a light touch. So, And I'm just kind of using the dry brush to blend it down. Okay. Next. Notice I haven't re reloaded my brush. I've done the last 
two or three with just the same amount of paint on my brush. So I'm not pressing down hard. And I'm able to get plenty of paint down. And then just very lightly kind of coming through and scrubbing that out. Okay, so look at this. It's already pretty good. All right, and then I'm going to get kind of a mid-tone and do some spots and things on this one down here because it's not it's not in the sun it's sort of shadowed this one is sort of supporting all of them down there okay so there we go there's our roof maybe I, I'm gonna add some more highlights to it but but it's pretty close and then let's do the sides I've got the mid-tone here I'm just gonna Run it up and then blend it into my dark there. And then let's do it on this side. So I'm saying that like the front edges are brighter, so I'm gonna do these front edges and then sort of brushing it back towards the side here. Okay, so that looks good. Let's get the black. I'm going to get a little bit of that ult the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to clean out my brush actually so that it's really nice and cl clean because I want this to be really dark. I'm going to get the black and a little bit of the ultramarine blue and maybe a little bit of glaze. And then I'm just going to go in the ditch and just kind of go across in the ditch here. Really define these boards. They're really logs, not boards. They're little round logs that are stacked on each other. Okay, and then I'm gonna wipe this out. And I'm just gonna kinda of come up here and sort of push that black up. Just a little bit, I don't want it to be a line. So anywhere it looks like a line, I'm just gonna kinda of smush it around so that it's, it's uh, blended out. Okay, that looks good. Good, good, good. All right, now let's go ahead and clean that out. And then I'm gonna get some of my, let's go ahead and get some of this white, maybe a little bit of the unbleached titanium. And I'm gonna grab just a little bit of that blue that we were using from before for the highlight. So I wanna be, but I wanna be lighter than that. So, you know, set them side by side and see. I want this color to be brighter a little bit more light, and I'm gonna come down just like I did here, where I'm gonna leave just a little bit of this, so this is this way. I've got it dark on the bottom, kind of mid-tone, and then I want my light color to be kind of just inside the edge, so leaving a little bit of this darker color along the top, okay? And this I'm really gonna just kind of dab in walk it around that makes sense and then you can go all the way to the top if you want to in some of them but I do like in logs especially to kind of have just a tiny bit of that darker color and and you can maybe dab there's some like moss and things or like little lichen growths and things on here too. You can dab that on if you want. Uh, we'll put, we're putting some moss on here as well, but so you don't have to have it everywhere. In fact, it's better a little bit, I think, if you kind of leave maybe some of these not as bright, because that makes it look like, you see how it looks like it's a little dipped in right here? That's because these aren't light. If I put them all light, they would pull them forward. But because I don't have that bright light on this section, it pushes it back down. Okay. Pull those ends out so that they're sticking out. Right, I like it. 
Amazing, right? It's crazy how that works. Just a little bit of highlight in the right place. Okay, we'll put a little bit of it down here. There's not going to be as much because it's a little bit more shaded down here, but I do want those to be a little bit more rounded. And then I'm going to get my dark color and just kind of blend over. You can glaze there too if you want. Okay, that looks good. All right, so let's use the same colors on our rocks. I'm gonna get this kind of bluish ultramarine blue and unbleached titanium. Maybe a little bit of burnt sienna in there. So it's just a really pretty gray with a, just a tiny hint of blue. And I'm going uh, light-ish, not, not all the way light, but I'm going to do my rocks now. In fact, I think I'm going to switch maybe. Well, I don't know. I can get kind of geometric shapes with this, but just kind of watch yourself. You want, you want, watch yourself. Watch it. Um, <laughs> you want to, sorry, just thought that was funny. Um, you want to have kind of more uh, angular lines with this, you know, to do these rocks. So I'm going to, Kind of maybe pull some straighter lines, some like that. It's amazing. It's just coming out of the dark. That dark really helps with this. So I'm going to do kind of like a squared off end there and pull it back. Do that. And then this one will just do kind of a flat line there. And then maybe a little bit more rounded there. <laughs> okay, and then let's, this, we don't have to do as much as like when we did the rock wall, although if you want to um, reference that rock wall painting that we did and want your rocks to be really like realistic and more clean looking, like more um, new, um, or, you know, fresher, um, not as rustic, you could, uh, definitely reference that photo and do some splattering, doing some different things on these rocks that, to make them look more realistic. Um, I, I think I'm going a little too far here, but you get the idea. Just kind of doing little, little dabs and drags of my paint. And the reason this is working is because I'm getting areas like this where there's less coverage. I'm not going full coverage with all this. I'm dry brushing some of these areas like here. And so I'm getting three colors by doing that. I've got my dark already and then I'm getting this mid-tone area that's dry brushed and you can see through the dark. And then I've got this light, these lighter areas here and there. So that's why it's kind of working um, and making it look just with this one color making it look like they're kind of stones so that looks pretty good and this is all going to be green over here so pretty happy with that I think I'm going to bring it up a little bit over here in the back I think I'm going to bring that edge up a little bit kind of up to where I drew my chalk and then some of this inside is kind of coming down so put kind of some mid-tone color just coming down the inside just the hint of color kind of coming down the inside of that stone well but make sure it's nice and dark down here at the bottom so I'm going to get my really dark color and come back in with that just make sure this area is really nice and dark and I can even glaze back over any areas that and by glaze, I just mean kind of go in with like a little bit of transparent color of some glazing medium if I want to. And, okay, there we go. Mm. So which now, white were you using? What? Which white were you using? Uh, that was burnt umber with, um, no, I'm sorry, ultramarine blue with unbleached titanium and burnt sienna. That's okay. what that was. All right, thank you. On the rocks. Oh, on the rocks. Uh -huh. Yep. And on here it was burnt umber and and ultra
ultramarine blue with a little bit of black <coughs> and white on the on the top. Okay, I'm gonna get white and I'm gonna mix it in with that so it's just a little bit lighter and I'm gonna go back over here and just dry brush some rock that's coming up. Again, kind of keeping them flat-ish. You know those stones, like you're seeing the flat edges are catching the light there. So that looks pretty good. And just going over with some light colors here and just leaving a little bit of dark in between here and there so that they've got, you know, like the illusion of some <coughs> grout or something, you know, separating them. Okay, and if you want to, you can add some of this lighter color down here on a few of the stones. Kind of like that. Okay. All right. So we've got a pretty good beginning of something here. Now I'm going to switch over to a foliage brush. So I think I'm going to use the three inch willows blender or, you know, blender brush of some sort. I'm going to just wipe out all of my chalk marks. Oh, I said I was going to draw this, but basically it's a mini triangle, you know, like a flat edge. If you did a triangle like that and you just cut off the top and then two sticks and a oval with two lines. So it's not, I think it's cool. no, I this think is probably one of the easiest things we've drawn in a long time. Is that a polygon? Uh, no, um, rhombus? I don't know. <laughs> Kurt? <laughs> uh, there's some math majors out there that'll tell us. Geometry sure. people. Geometry people help us. You, you, you're an engineer. You should know that. Yeah, but our planes aren't that shape. <laughs> well, not on purpose. Till they start making planes this shape, we don't have to worry yeah. about you not knowing what that is. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not a square or a rectangle. I don't no. Know what that, oh, wait a minute. It is a polygon. It's an irregular polygon. A regular polygon. Irregular. Okay. A triangle with its top cut off. <laughs> there you go. As it's known in the art biz. Yep. Okay, so I've got green gold, added some white there, and then I kind of made my own green gold here uh, with the little green and um, the quinacridone gold there. And so I've got some light and dark-ish moss color and I'm just going to get some straight green gold add a little bit more of that yellow uh, or the quinacridone gold to it. You could use burnt sienna if you don't have quinacridone gold but I'm just going to now tap over this is the part where you have to be kind of brave because you're going to be covering up all this nice stuff that you just did but this will kind of add a lot of charm to the our wishing well We've got all this nice moss on it I'm just going to kind of meander it in a few little other places here and there, up here. And then when you're doing the highlights, you kind of want those to be on the top generally, unless your light is coming, source is coming from the below, which can happen, but is not that often in nature. Um, generally, your sun's coming from above and so your highlights are going to be above your darker areas so just kind of keep that in mind while we're doing the highlights here and I feel like my sunlight is kind of coming from this direction maybe so we can go just a little heavier with the light on that particular side so like over here I'm just tapping to 
create that mossy texture. And just do it until you like what you've got, you know, little as little or as more much as you want of this moss. I did find that it was going on a little transparent. My green gold is kind of a transparent color, so I had to add a couple layers on there before it started covering, but it's got pretty good coverage now. Let's go ahead and use this down here. I'm going to use a little bit more. seems like down here there was a little bit more green to the moss, so I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of my green and just use that down here. Make sure I leave some of my dark showing through. So it's not just a solid blob of light yellow, the yellowish green. It'll look a little bit better. <clears throat> Let some of those stones peek through. I think I'm going to put a little bit over here. And then get my lighter, lighter yellow green here. See how I'm kind of doing these little rounded, just like I did on the trees, just little rounded bits. So I leave like little dark areas for, yeah, that looks good. Okie doke. Let's do some really bright up here, just some areas. Some of it is kind of poking up like grass, so I'm going to kind of dab upwards with some of it. Just kind of set my brush down and sort of quickly flick it upwards. I like it. Okay. This area looks a little bit light in some areas, so I think I'm going to get my dark green, maybe a little bit of that turquoise and some either burnt umber or burnt sienna, just a darker a, a brown to darken it up. And take off some of the extra, get a little bit of the glaze. Don't want a lot of this on my brush. I want this to be mostly dry. It's not quite dry yet, but I think I can just tap it in here. Should stick. It's not all the way dry yet, so it should be okay. Okay, there we go. Very good. And then I'm going to take some of this and just kind of trail it down, kind of come down like it's dripping down almost off of it. If you wanted to, you could do something like wisteria or something like that. That would be really pretty, like do a little vine up it and hang some wisteria down. I've done, uh, I did a, like an old red barn last year with some wisteria with that, you know, purple kind of grape-like um, flowers. Um, so I think anything like that would be really pretty, but I, I really liked this moss, so I decided to go ahead and keep it just mossy. All this fun green and... Okay, so let me grab, I'm gonna grab my um, liner now. This is the two liner. And with the liner brush, you just wanna be adding lots of water to whatever your color you're using. So I'm gonna just add my green gold and phthalo green to this light yellow, the yellow green that I had over here that had the white in it. I want a little bit more of a basic green color. Might add a little bit of this gold color just to tone it. Gr orange is a great color to add to greens too, to tone it. So I could add a little bit of this pyrrole orange. You can see what it does. It like neutralizes it. It instantly makes it more like of an olive tone. Um, I think I want it a little bit more turquoisey. So I'm going to get a little bit more of my, just making a lot because I'm going to do a lot of grasses. So, okay, that looks nice. So it's got a little bit of all my greens in there. It's got a little bit of yellow tone. Um, and then just that touch of orange to really kind of neutralize it somewhat. So it's not so like super vibrant. Okay. And I'm just going to do some grasses back here with this. I'm holding the brush fairly, fairly far back and just 
letting the tip do the work. And if I've got my my color mixed up right and it and thin enough, it's going to just create these lines. And I'm not moving my hand up and down. I'm just flicking my wrist or really kind of pushing with these fingers this way, just kind of doing this motion right here, but keeping it in one spot. And then I might move it side to side a little bit or up and down, but I'm not trying to draw these brush, uh, these, these grasses, just letting the brush do the, the line because it will, if we, you know, do this, this motion, it's going to hit the page here and then it's going to just naturally, as you push up, it's going to remove it from the page and get thinner and thinner automatically. So you don't have to do this careful thing where you're, you know, lifting um, on its own. It's just real, a much easier way of doing grasses, I find, faster too. So getting some white. Got a little bit of thick, thick area right there. I don't know. I was talking and not paying attention. Let me see if I can get that off. There we go. Don't be pointing at my stomach. You see that? Okay. <laughs> Don't be pointing at your stomach. What do you mean by that? You say you've got a thick area there. Oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't. Definitely not. Okay, so just putting lots of grasses. So I'm kind of doing these a little bit smaller. You see how I, down here I'm going a little bit thicker with it? So I'm pressing down a little bit harder before I flick it up down here closer to the wishing well. So these grasses are a little bit thicker. And they get a little smaller, a little bit thinner, a little bit less pressure on the brush farther away and then as we get closer down here we're gonna kind of have a line of grasses back here and then another line that's kind of filling it this bottom area here and if it's not showing up then you just either need to go a little bit darker or a little bit lighter it depends on how dark your greenery is that you first put down here um, in the foreground you want to leave it fairly mid to dark tone so that these grasses can kind of show up and if they're breaking up like that you see these ones here kind of broke halfway those that's just because I didn't have enough water in my brush so I can try to go over them or I can just put some flowers or something over there I'm not worried about it we got plenty of grasses to go lots And some of them I want to kind of fall over on themselves, you know, like grasses do. So you can kind of have them do like that if you want to get fancy with it, but I'm not going to worry about that too much today. This is just kind of a fun little, fun little painting. I don't want to get too fancy with it. I want to keep it fairly beginner friendly, I should say. Okay, so there we go. Lots of grasses. More is better with grass. I feel like um, a lot of people, when they do grasses, they just kind of go halfway and they quit. So just do more than you think you need to, and I think you'll be all right. As long as you can kind of see between the strands a little bit. I mean, you don't want it to be solid, solid, but... Okay, I'm going to get some... Indian or cadmium yellow light and I'm just mixing it in with that color that I just did and little little bit of white so just a little bit lighter and I'm gonna tap at the bottom of some of these grasses down here just a few and you could do this beforehand um, if you cover up some grasses you can put them back in like if you cover too much of your grasses but um, I'm just trying to kind of carefully go in between some of the grasses that I'm seeing 
so that I'm getting some. And these are going to be like little flower bushes, so they can go on top of the grass too. It's fine. We'll be putting more grass in probably before we're done. So just kind of tapping in a little bit of the lighter yellowish green there. And then let's put on some flowers. So um, whatever we want to do for flowers, I'm going to get my smallish round brush. So this is a one round. I think I might actually use... Hmm, might use this one. This one is a two aught round, but it's a little bit stubbier. You can see it doesn't come to near, you know, quite as a fine a point. I think this one might be a little easier, but we'll see. I'm gonna get a little bit of white. And again, this is a round brush, so I'm gonna want that paint to be a little bit more fluid than normal so that it flows off my brush really easily. So just adding a little bit of water to that and mixing it through so that it's a good consistency. Not quite as thin as the liner brush, but close. Okay. And let me get a little bit of yellow. Go over here and I'm just using whatever white is left in my brush to mix in with that yellow. And let's do the yellow flowers that, that are way back here. And these are from Photoshopped also, so, and badly done. So if you're like, those look fake. Well, that, it is fake, so we're, we're going to try to make it look less fake once we paint it. But. So when are we starting <laughs> our, uh, our Photoshop channel? <laughs> yeah. How to Photoshop no, my, like the pros. My Photoshop are not, <laughs> skills are not up to par. That's for darn sure. Okay, so just a few little dots. Um, the flowers, as they, you know, they're round, rounded here, but they're facing the sun, so they tend to have kind of more of an oval shape as we're looking at it from a distance. If you're looking at it straight on or if it's facing you, you know, it'd be more circular. But since we're kind of looking at them from the side, they might be tilted this way or that way, be different kind of forms of oval um, like that. Okay. All right, that looks good. That's all we need to do. And then well, let's do some, uh, let's see. We'll do some colored um, cone flower, some yellow cone flower here. We, this is a photo from our garden and they came back and then some this year. I'm so excited. They're everywhere. And they're very, very big. So I'm hoping they bloom the same colors. I hope they don't just bloom purple because that's kind of, you know, they were kind of an exotic <clears throat> coneflower color when I bought them last year. They were like red and orange and like, like a fiery orange and orangey red and this bright yellow color. And they were really pretty. I like the purple ones too, but the, I just had never seen them these colors, so I got them. So I won't be devastated if they're all purple, but I do hope that some of them turn out to be colored again this year when they where they come back. All right, so that looks good. Let's leave that. I'm gonna get um, some just this white that I mixed up. And I'm going to press my brush kind of flat for these Cosmos. They have kind of a an angular shape to their petals. I really need to make them smaller than the cone flowers because they are smaller than the cone flowers. But I don't know that I did that. But it's okay. This is our garden. We can do what we want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So see I'm going kind of a little raggedy on the edge. The cone, the cosmos have like a, a jagged tip um, to their petals. Not as smooth as like a daisy. Not as rounded. And not as many petals. They're a little bit bigger. 
like that. Okay, and do like that. Let's do a couple down here. Maybe that's just facing upward, opening up. Let's do another one over here that's kind of just opening up. Going that way. And let's do some purplish ones in here. Why can't the serious now we're being flowers? Being really, really quiet. Yeah, you can like Sorry. focus. Focus, focus, focus. We got to see our dog today, and I just about cried. <laughs> oh, he's in doggy boot camp for three weeks. It's Pickle, little lovely dog. We love him to death. He's a cavapoo, and he's the sweetest dog ever, but he is a mess on the leash, and we have tried and tried, and so we've called in the professionals, and they're, they keep him for three weeks at, his, at their place, and train him and as soon as he saw us he was gone he was like he came running over jumping all over us like all the training just went right out the window <laughs> you know but we were we were enjoying it so we were being, but he did better than normal he did do better than normal and he did get you know when she called him back finally he did come back and and was listening so and he I, only has one tattoo so far. <laughs> Some gang tats. When you send them out to boot camp. <laughs> He's got mama on his shoulder. <laughs> Mother. <laughs> it's a little eagle. <laughs> right, I'm going to get some dark green here. And I'm going to just um, put a shadow underneath my moss here now that it's dry. Just right up underneath where it sets on there. Anywhere where it's kind of setting on the logs, that'll make it look like it's not floating, but is actually attached and has a little shadow body there. Okay. And same thing here. Just kind of a little shadow. Just helps settle it and center it on there and make it look a little bit more attached. All right. Oh, flowers are turning out good. I like them. Uh, let's do some purple. So I'm going to get the yellow or the magenta. Probably could have done without the orange today, honestly, in hindsight. But And I'm going to just use the magenta with a little bit of white, I think, because it's pretty close to what the color is on these. We could add a little bit of that orange if we want a more reddish. And let's go ahead and do kind of... A little bit more white so they show up against that color there. Come flowers, I think, are one of the easier ones to paint because they're just kind of a series of petals that go up and then have that nice cone shape on top. Let's do a couple in it. Some other. I'm going to cluster these together a little bit so they're not so perfectly separated. All right, that looks good. And then we're going to do some birds that are colorful. They're little bee eater birds. And um, we looked it up. They're, they're pretty much everywhere but the U.S. So everybody else is lucky they get them, but we don't. So I was thinking maybe, uh, uh, you know, catch and release program here, but we get in so much trouble. <laughs> Just saying, I wouldn't mind seeing one in my garden, but, you know, I'd probably get in a lot of trouble for it, so. And we need the bees. True, true. They might eat our maybe, bees. Maybe so they can be vegetarian. There you go. Maybe they eat the mosquitoes. They'd eat our mosquitoes, and then we... And the wasps. Exactly. All right. I'm just going to mix up. So I mixed up the quinacridone gold, magenta, burnt umber, a little bit of burnt sienna. Uh, or, I'm sorry, burnt sienna and a little bit of burnt umber here for this color. 
and this is going to be the center of our flowers here so they're going to go on pretty dark it's going to be a little bit hard to see maybe if it's against something dark but then we'll put some highlights on them to make them stand out a little bit better and these ones I'm going to go a little bit more gold over here um, on the yellow ones so good and then I'm gonna get some of the yellow from before that had like a gold in the yellow here and I'm gonna dab on top this little highlight to highlight the tops of these going to do a ton more with these flowers because I don't want to get too fussy with them. I think this is enough for just a good beginner lesson, you know. Um, if you wanted to go in, you could shadow the petals and get a little fancier with them, but I think we're going to just kind of call that good enough there. Um, and then let's go ahead and use this color on these ones too, just to tap in the top of the cones a little bit brighter at the top than at the bottom and I'm going to get some of this color and just kind of mix a mid-tone with that yellow and kind of dab in sort of the middle area there to blend in between that dark and light because it seems a little harsh okay there we go and then let's use this goldish color for the centers of our cosmos okay and then get the bright cadmium yellow light with maybe a little bit of white to make sure it pops and put that tap that right in the center of those leaving a little bit of that dark showing okay there we go okay and then Let's do a few stems on these. So I'm gonna get some of that dark green. Um, and we'll just make sure, maybe a little bit of light color, just make sure that these have a stem coming out to them. Some of these that are kind of in the grasses, it's not as needed, but you know, that one was like way out there by itself. So it needed something like that one does too, you know. And then this one that is just opening up, just kind of give it a little bit of green underneath, like a little nubbin of green, uh, like a triangle shape underneath it here where it attaches to the stem. Okay. And then I'm gonna use, I think I'm gonna get a angle brush. So get this quarter inch angle and get some of my green, a little bit of the white. And I'm just gonna dab some leaves because these these paint okay, these echinacea have leaves, big leaves that are around them. So I wanna kind of dab in some leafy shapes in there. The um Get some blue with this green, create kind of a smoky blue green, like Dusty Miller kind of color, you know, bluegrass color. And we'll use some of that around the sides here. I'm gonna kind of dab in some blue flowers. So I'm gonna kind of start out with little bit of this and just sort of dab in some foliage like little taps I might well that's fine I'm just gonna use this it's gonna change brushes again but yeah no need okay and then let's use the 
<clears throat> ultramarine blue. If you have the color light ultramarine, that's the color that I'll be really using pretty much. So just white plus ultramarine to make this really pretty purpley blue color for the corn flowers. And we'll just dab those in. They're going to look really pretty up against that dark, so make sure you kind of tap a few of them over the dark area. And I'm just doing dots for these because they're really not that obvious in our picture, like they're small. So I'm going to just dab them in as circles, kind of just to give a little other color in there and then get some white and dab um, little tiny dots for the centers of these. They really probably should be more rounded but mine are ended up looking like triangles. That's okay. I'm not, not worried about it. Okay. You could do larkspur too. You could do those like, you know, tall spiky flowers. Um, maybe some pink larkspur would be pretty. Um, down here at the bottom there was some, um, looks like, um, I must add a picture of some, um, oh, I can't think of the name right now. Uh, Scabiosa, where they have the kind of, you get the purple and magenta here. some those those are like little rounded flowers that are on a long stem it's not quite the right color for them but just having in some different types of flowers there and then there's some orange ones that's why I got the orange so I'm gonna get the orange and a little bit of my cadmium yellow light and my white and I've got a lot of yellow in here so hopefully that'll do okay or I've got a lot of pink in there in that white but that looks all right um, get a little bit more of my bright orange a little bit more of my let me get some gold Ooh, that's pretty okay yeah so, just dabbing in some little, these are little, I think it's phlox, maybe. Okay. Whatever flower floats your boat, it doesn't matter. Just, I'm going to get some yellow, and I'm going to put some of that in there with that. I feel like it'll kind of help break it up. Maybe a little bit of that orange, but maybe a little bit more yellowish. I'm just going to dab in some little kind of spiky type things around it. Plus that yellow will kind of help pull the colors all together. And give these orange ones a little bit more depth. <clears throat> okay. this little round brush again get my yellow and some green gold a little bit of white if I've got any I don't have any we'll see and I'm going to create little leaves around my around my orange flowers here okay so I can't remember if we saw this on a show or in person. The mm -hmm. feeding of the bee, bee eaters. Yeah, it was on a. It was a show. It was on a show. Okay. Yeah, it was That's on. What I thought. It was on that one of that that zoo show that we like to watch because oh, they the had New a New York Zoo or whatever. That yeah, was. or the zoo. I can't remember. Yeah. There was a couple that we were watching there for a while. Yeah, and they had a. They, I think it was the Australian Zoo. If I'm not mistaken. Okay. And they had a. 
exhibit, exhibit yeah. that they were cleaning or something, and they were, or it was a brand new exhibit that they were just opening up with the that they had just made for the bee eaters specifically, and they released a bunch of bees in there, and they were snatching them out of the air, and because yeah. they normally didn't feed them that way, and so it, a lot of them the. The, was the first time that the birds had oh, even eaten right. that way. They had been kept born in captivity, right? So they were, right. They'd they never know how yeah. to or weren't taught by their parents, right? Right. That's so right. they had That's to right. kind of figure it out. Yeah, it was really interesting. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit more white flowers, and I feel like I went over a little overboard with the flowers, but you know that's just what you get when you watch my channel. So it's just <laughs> sorry. There sorry, once was not a well. sorry. There was a well on this painting at one time. There was. It was. It, it was it's, irrelevant. It's, n it's not in there anymore. Not really part of the story. Not really part of the story. Uh, I'm going to put some white highlights on these, especially on these little guys here, just to make sure they really stand out. I got the fluid white this time. That way um, it'll really go off my brush easier. This brush is probably towards its last legs. It's fritzing out on me a little bit, which is not great. I'm just going to put a few little dabs of white, you know, here and there to kind of break up the sameness. Okay, so that's good. Now let's put our little birds. And um, actually, I take that back. I'm going to put a little bit of highlight. I said I wasn't going to get too fancy with these, but I... I can't, I can't help it. I need a little bit of highlight on these because they're just kind of all looking the same. So I'm going to put a little bit of highlight on these petals just to kind of make them stick out a little bit more. There we go. Just a little bit more. You have pretty good... You got pretty good video of our painted bunting. I did, yeah. Way. I'll I'll pull it out here in a minute. You can see it. I'm not going to do that down there because then I'm going to have to put the center, and I don't want to have to do that. There you go. That's the spirit. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and use this color. I'm going to add a little bit of this orange. So it's the magenta and a little bit of orange. And we'll put this bird here that's right here. And the, the reason I used these birds is because they were matching the colors of my flowers. That's really the only reason. So if they didn't match, they didn't get to put in. These are so pretty. I'm so jealous of whoever gets to see these at their bird feeders. Let me know in chat if you've ever seen these in person. Uh, like in, in your wild. yard or whatever. In the wild, yeah. Because... They're so We've got a few Australian people here, so they may have seen I bet. Them. I bet. Yeah, I don't know how common they are, you know, if they're like our cardinals where they're everywhere or if it's... Okay, so basic bird shape is going to be a circle on top of a kind of a egg, almost like a kidney shape. So you're going to be painting that for the body and then put the circle on top of this so that it blends in. So my head of my bird is going to come around to get the black hair or the blue. Let's get the blue and maybe a little bit of white and make the gray for it. So this is, and th these birds don't have a ton, like a really rounded head. So it's pretty flat right here. And then they have a really long beak coming out. Um, actually, that's not the right direction. I'm going to want that beak to go upward. And I may make that area behind him a little bit more light green so that I can see his beak a little bit better. So I'm just going to dab in just a little light green right there so I can see the beak. When I do it, the beak is kind of black. And it's got a stripe for the head. The eyes somewhere in there, too, probably. And then this long beak kind of just comes out like that. All right. And then the 
the back has got, I was like, these are a lot of colors. I didn't really think this through. I should have done cardinals or something because these are, these have like 12 colors in them. So kind of a rusty color for the wing. Comes down. There's a light blue underneath here. <laughs> Yet another color. And then the tail is kind of a gray, gray blue maybe. Can't really tell. I'll do a little bit lighter color there. And then I just have to do the belly part. So the belly is kind of an aqua green, aqua teal color. I'm gonna get some of my teal and some of that white. More white. Okay, make that under part of the bird teal right there. Okay, and then I'm gonna highlight the back with a little bit of this orangey color. Maybe get a little bit of white with the orange and come from behind the head and just kind of highlight that area right there so you can see where it comes down and meets the tail. There's a little bit of this lighter color underneath the body. And I'm going to get this rusty color and add a little bit of the white to it. That was the magenta and burnt sienna. Or burnt orange if you have it. I'm going to use that on the wing hair. There he is. And then I'll give him some feet even though you really can't see it in the picture. So they'll probably be coming down from back here. Just going to kind of do like the suggestion of some feet there. And make sure that this is nice and dark underneath here. And then let's do a little bit of a, just a tiny, tiny lighter area right there for like a suggestion of an eye. And I'm gonna get just a little bit of, okay, so these are harder than like, you know, this, this I would leave out if you're not a, if this is your first time painting, you know, <laughs> like the rest of it, I think is pretty doable, but these will, these will be pretty hard because they're so small. So, um, you might just do a one, one color with this shape and a few little highlights instead of all of these different colors on here. didn't really think that through very much, but all right. So that's that one. I think, I think he's got some turquoise by the on his face too. I'm gonna do some turquoise right here by his eye. Maybe not that much. Rub off some of that. Okay. There we go. Yeah. So there's one. This guy's got this green gold color that's in the rest of the painting. So I already started with the orange parts of him, but the rest of him, so this is the back of his head. It comes around. This is his wing. And it's like a little bit rounded right here. Probably made his head too big. I, I'm pretty sure I did. So I'll have to correct that. And then kind of comes down to like a point. So right here and here. And then the tail comes out. And it's pretty long tail right there. Okay. Then there's a little bit of darker, looks like black, or maybe this rusty red color underneath here. Just where the wings end or overlap. And then along the face, he's got a bright orange spot right there. Yeah, I definitely did the head kind of the wrong shape there. I'm going to fix that. The face has, let's do the beak here. And then the eye color coming down there. Is that right? I don't know if that's the right spot, but. Probably should have drawn these out a little bit. Just winging it here. Oh, white. 
Do the forehead with some white. And underneath the beak with some white, leaving that little black stripe. Okay, and then we'll get some of this white and a little bit of the green, make a lighter green to dab on the wings to highlight them. I'm gonna get that dark green again. Just a few highlights on there. And then let's do the breast of it with a little bit of gold and yellow. Again, lots of colors on these. I don't know what I was thinking. It's definitely not a necessarily beginner friendly bird to try to do, especially not this small. Okay, so there we go. A little bit of gold on the breast, maybe a little bit of gold on the back of the wing there. Top. I, I kind of did that angle wrong. I think I want to go straighter with that black stripe along the eye, so I'm going to try to correct that a little bit. It's a little bit more across. Whoop. It's a little bit more straight across. There we go. And then I'm going to highlight the top of the beak. Just a very, very thin line. This may not be the right brush. Okay. Let's try to get a little highlight on this big too. There we go. You can see it a little bit better. Let me get a little bit of dark on underneath this beak. color at the top of the head. I kind of covered up all of this color when I was doing the black, so I'm going to put it back in here. Round that out. Right there. Okay. Uh, the beak's a little bit thick, but it's close. Let me get a little tiny bit of white dab in a little bit of a tiny suggestion of an eye. I don't want a big white dot though, so just watch it. Watch that. I'm gonna I'm gonna use that gray and kind of thin out that beak right there. Okay, that looks good. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit deeper with the color on the wing right here. Just a little bit darker right there. And let's do the one on the roof. He's got blue. Kind of a turquoisey blue. Maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue with this turquoise. So like phthalo blue would probably be close. But I didn't want to have to have another color. So I left phthalo blue off my list. Um, rounded. Kind of heart shape. Almost like that. And he's looking over here. The head's going to be rounded right here, facing this way. Okay. He's going to be my best one, I can tell already. <laughs> His shape's a little easier. Going to get that green that I just used down here and just add it to his wings. Create a little highlight there. coming up the side of his face and then get that yellow cadmium yellow light Let me add a little bit of white just because the cadmium yellow is not going to cover very well on its own and I'm going to just paint this face in yellow Get a little bit thicker yellow to dab in down here. Okay, nice and bright. Then I'm gonna get the black. How are we doing on time? Oh, we're doing good. Okay, I'm gonna do my beak and run that line through the eye. 
back through. And then do a little bit of a red, orangey color on the top of the head. I'm gonna get the gold and the orange together. It's kind of a gold. Add a little tiny bit of white if you want it to show up a little bit better. <clears throat> right up here. There we go. And I'm going to do a little hint of that color coming around there. Like there's some maybe magenta in the tail feathers and at the bottom of those wings. And then I'm going to get some of my light color. And you could save all of this light color and do all three of them at the same time. Like if you're doing it assembly line a little bit more efficient to do it this way. To do it, you know, do all three highlights at the same time, but I tend to just paint, paint them one at a time. There we go. A little beak, a little dab for the eye. I might do a little bit more of a yellow, if you're seeing a little bit of like an orangey eye there. And then I'm going to do a little bit of A little bit of a light aqua for the wings on the back. Just mixing it back into that original blue color that we had and do some stripes on there, some stripes on the tail. Keeping it very like loose and not getting too fussy with the birds. And again, you could do like way more simple birds like cardinals all red, little spike on the head, some blue or some black details and make it a lot easier on yourself. But why would we ever do it easy? <laughs> right? I, why start now? Get the black. Okay. Dabbing on, don't need feet there. This guy's kind of sitting on the ledge, but I'll go ahead and put a little dark where he's setting, so he's got even like a little type of shadow <coughs> under there where he's standing. Feet. Yeah, a suggestion of feet-ish, <laughs> feet light. All right, there we go. They probably could have been a little bit bigger, but actually by because of the size of the you know the rest yeah. of it, I think that it's probably about right. Yeah. Um, there we go our little wishing well hope you guys enjoyed it give it a thumbs up like we subscribe we oh we've got questions okay I'm gonna while you're doing that then I'm gonna glaze down here just darken up some of these and maybe give some of these leaves a little more definition okay so go for it just gonna mix up a little bit of dark question. green here turn my mic there okay turn it up okay it says the Princeton Blender, mm -hmm. quarter inch velvet touch brush, mm -hmm. a clear wine colored brush. What is the reason for the end of the brush being shaped in a flat way? Um, I think they have it shaped that way so that you can um, do uh, like a scraffito type techniques. And we used it that way. When we showed you um, a few weeks ago, let me show you what I'm talking about. This technique where you scrape through wet paint to show the underlayer. And so this nice little hard blade works really great for it. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Um, I, okay. I don't think you could, it's not flexible enough to do much of anything else with it. So. I see. Okay. Yeah. I like it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then we have a question that says, how can I get my acrylic to go on better? on the pad, like on like a paper books, like what you have right there? Use more water. So the pads will soak out like all the water almost immediately when you're working on them. So you really have to uh, adjust the amount of water that you have in your paint um, and make them much more fluid. 
and add add water as you go more often. But that's probably why you're you're just they they're pretty tricky, you know. They pull. They're great, but they the, some techniques are harder than others because they do pull a lot of the moisture right, right out of the brush. Right. So. Okay, and you better show us a video of your painted bunting. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, he was so cute. He was just snacking away, Until and I out. was able to get a good close yeah. up of him. Um, yeah, let me get him real quick here. Okay. Is it zooming in? There yeah, we go. It's focusing. There he is eating. Having a good day. Mm -hmm. Isn't they pretty? Look at those colors. He's got that bright blue. Oh, it's like ultramarine. And then the breast is like a like a really orangey bright red. Mm -hmm. And then the back is that green gold color. And his eye has like an orange ring around, around it. Around yeah. It, yeah. Which is really cool. Yeah, the eye's got like an orangey ring around it. But yeah. Yeah. Pretty fun. That was I was pretty proud of myself. And he showed up on Mother's Day this year. Well, he was so bright. Yeah. He was he was in the full sun. It, he usually is like in the shadows, so you can't see all his colors. But man, he was right out in the sun today, just bright, bright as could be, <laughs> really pretty. So yeah, that was a really fun, fun find. Okay, well, hope you guys liked it. Uh, like I said, give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'm gonna. Um, Don't forget to practice. Don't forget to practice, you know, it doesn't have to look good on your paper. Mine's, you know, kind of a mess, but, um, it's just a way to kind of, you know, this one, maybe not so much, but it is actually helpful to do these long, you know, these long lines where you're trying to get it super clean in between. Like it really does help you to practice that kind of thing. So, you know, fill in some, like get, get some, you know, maybe just make a shape and then draw some straight lines to to interconnect and fill in each one just as clean as you can and just see if you can get them really clean and then do it again but do them you know really super blendy in between the colors and have no hard lines at all and um, both both practices will really really help you because um, you both you need both at times you know there's times when you need a, a really soft touch and then sometimes where you you know you want it to be really um, obvious where the line stops and um, the other color starts. So all of that, I'm going to get some of this lighter color here, just some of the, I just felt like there was, like, looking at it, this was all kind of very similar in value, and so I'm just going to add some brighter leaves, but not everywhere, just a few little really bright leaves. Okay, and I think, is that all the questions? Well, it is all the questions, but we just had a super chat. Oh, yay. I mean, if I can find my cowbell here, I'm going to ring it. You know what I was thinking, too? You could have, like, a little wooden sign with a name on it right here. You know how they have them hanging down? Sometimes they'll have, like, a little sign. There's plenty of room there for that. Something like that would look kind of cute, I think. Um... You know, camp, whatever. I don't know. You get creative. Think of your own. Go for it. Sorry, hon. Okay. Here we go. <coughs> this um, foliage up over my um, thing right there. I'm just going to cover that up. Okay. Woohoo! All right. Here's our super jet. Oh, cowbell. Oh, yeah. I was going to glaze some colors. So while you're doing that, I'm going to glaze some... Um, Orange or some reds and, and yellows in my stone. Go. Uh, it's from Cindy. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Go. I mean it this time. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Thanks you. Thanks for all you do. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I'm interrupting Cindy. It's terrible. Moo. Yeah. Interrupting cow. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> Super sweet. Okay, just adding a little touch of 
yellow oxide and burnt sienna here and there on my stone just to kind of make it a little bit more earthy and I'm seeing that in the picture and I meant to do it before I did my flowers in between one after I did the moss but I forgot so we're doing it now just tapping in a little bit of burnt sienna and yellow oxide okay there we go that's it I mean it this time we are really done <laughs> for real this time uh thank you so much if you are part of our patreon crew we will not be doing our Thursday video this week but we will be back next week and we'll be back on Tuesday for another video hopefully um and we'll be painting an iris and Mark may not go to bed before 10 o'clock we'll see how long it takes me but he'll he'll, he'll leave before I finish maybe we <laughs> see yes. I think I can do it <laughs> I think I can do it on a Tuesday. And for those we'll who are new, this is Angela being finished. <laughs> I am finished. I'm just seeing things. I just noticed that it was a little bit light right there where it needed to be dark. Okay. I mean it this time. We're done. We're done. Right. For real. Brushes down. <laughs> Tests over. <laughs> Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.